guys we are back with the new Canon EOS 700D it's also called as Canon Rebel T5i in some countries including the US so this guy is a successor of the quite popular but very short-lived Canon EOS 650D that is the T4i so in this video we're gonna show you what's in the box we're gonna take you through the hardware of the camera and then we'll talk about the user interface performance and at last we'll tell you whether this is uh, an actually a successor of the 650d and if it's worth skipping the 650d or whether it's worth your money at all The 700D comes in a fairly compact box. This camera has an APS-C size sensor as the model name suggests. So wherever you see three figures there 700, 650, 600D, 550D all those have APS-C size scrubbed sensors. So there you have the camera it comes with an 18 to 135 IS STM kit lens. You can also choose to have the body only or with the 1855mm lens and you'll have to pay accordingly. So you have some quick specs out there. Uh, that's the price with the 18 135mm lens 77995 so that's the MRP but you might get it for much cheaper if you can strike a good deal with your local vendor or some online retailer some software information on those side and that's about it so we're gonna open the box and see what's in there yeah. so we have the digital solution disc there some documents and CD stuff so you're gonna see what those are so we have the complete manual here detailed then we have the software instruction manual and then we have some quick tutorials here which is cool they see all nice and then uh, there's nothing much here so we go further in and we see that there is a USB cable it has a mini USB out there then we have the external charger there should be a power cord inside there it is that's the power cord then we have solder strap we have the battery the protection hole then it's an LPE8 battery then we have the kit lens well protected that's the 18 135mm it lens and then finally we have the 700D body here Ooh. it looks fairly compact not much bigger than the 100D in fact the 700D is almost identical to the 650D in terms of design construction and also quality with minor cosmetic change here and there will go through those and then it has some nice little features that's added over the 650d but more or less it's fairly the identical body of the 650d that you have if you have the 650d in fact then we don't see any reason to get the 700d but if you do not have 650d you probably could skip the 650d to have this will talk about all those in detail so that's the 700d body yeah. the look and feel of the 700d that is the rebel t5i is almost identical to that of the older 650d that is the rebel t4i and when i say identical they are um, very few minor cosmetic changes as well as some UI menu 
uh, changes and kind of workflows and getting into uh, each menu types and some live views that are uh, changed on the 700D compared to the 650D. Now when I hide this, you almost won't be able to tell whether it's a 650D or a 700D because the mode dial is one of the most visibly prominent change in the 700D. How is that the mode dial here you see all the letters and pictures are embossed whereas on the 650D they were kind of printed. Also the mode dial is now 360 degree rotable and you can rotate it in both directions indefinitely whereas on the 650D you used to get stuck at some times. The 700D also has a slightly better build. Uh, it feels better although does not uh, look that better but it kind of feel like a more premium you know mid-range DSLR and it has a very cool sandblasted look matte so you won't have your fingerprints left over there but then the matte over the LCD monitor attracts kind of a dust because it's actually sandblasted you can see the sound of my fingers rubbing there so dust particle kind of at times gets stuck there so you'll have to uh, take care of that it looks dirty at times for example there you see very slight dirtiness and the you know, kind of yeah so another difference is that the 700 D uh, comes with STM lenses 18 to 55 mm and then this one is 18 to 135 mm STM lenses the 650D also supports the stepping motor then um, there are a few um, UI changes like for example you now have the live views enabled on the 700D you can um, particularly live view the creative um, you know scenes or those kind of the effects the creative effects so the front side has the autofocus ss lamp there the ir remote control receiver then you have the lens ring you have two lens mounts so this is for ef lenses this is for efs lenses this is an efs lens so there you see that's the white mark there so it will align to this lens mount if you have an ef lens then it will align to this mount your contact points and there is your mirror sitting behind the mirror is your sensor so it's an APS-C size sensor and in case of Canon that's about 22.3 um, into about um, 14 odd mm which is kind of slightly smaller than the ones on the Nikons and Sony's which are 23.5 into about 16 mm. Now um, a slightly smaller size sensor means a slightly larger crop factor so the Canon has a 1.6x crop factor um, when you compare it to a 35 mm full frame camera. So when you use let's say a telephoto lens on this body of the same focal length as on a Nikon or a Sony, this will give a little, this will give a very slightly um, you know better range range because this will uh, multiply the 35 mm equivalent focal length um, by 1.6, whereas on the Nikon or on the Sony camera they will multiply it by 1.5. Yeah, so you have the lens release button there, you have the uh, DOF preview button, then you have the flash initiate button there. So you press this and the flash pops come out. You have the shutter release button there. Let's check out the top. So you have the command dial, the loan command dial, you have the ISO button here, your mode dial, the power toggle video toggle lever there so that's the switch off switch on and then you go to the video then you have your eyelets for the lanyard you have the stereo mic your external hot shoe for your external flash and then your sensor mark there that's the built-in flash this side you have a single card slot you would have liked a dual card slot but that's how it is 
on this side you have all the boards covered by rubber flaps there so you what do you, you have your AV out that's the AV out or data transfer cable then you have your HDMI out that's kind of looks like a full size yeah so that's a full size HDMI out then you have that's for um, the wired remote control and then you have the 3.5 mm jack for the external mic on the back side you have the speaker here there you see you have the menu button the info button the viewfinder it's not an electronic viewfinder it's an optical viewfinder that's your touchscreen monitor your eye cup then your diopter setting uh, will there then that's the button to toggle between live view and then that's the AV button which mainly um, used when you using the full manual mode where simply rotating the um, command dial will change the shutter speed and when you press this and then rotate it will change the aperture button it also acts as a uh, exposure compensation scale as you can see here it's marked Q will toggle between your uh, quick functions and then it also gives you some print settings in playback mode so all these in blue colors are effective when you're on the playback mode then you have these four way buttons here um, and centered by the set or OK button you have the white balance autofocus those are the creative effects and then you have your drive mode so that um, you can click single photo multiple photo that's the burst mode and uh, for your information this guy shoots at a maximum of 5 fps then you can also have the self timer in the same menu you have a playback button and then your delete button and then your cpu access um, notification light so it's it'll, it'll keep on blinking when the camera is accessing the cpu the monitor is touchscreen. I'm gonna show that to you in a bit. It's 270 degree articulating. There you see, you can go like this, you can go like this, but you cannot go this again. This, and it's, you can almost look it from all sides except from this side. So you cannot, if you're here, then you cannot look at it because it cannot go like this. But other than that, you can almost look at it from all the other sides below you have the tripod mount and then your battery compartment there you see so this guy takes an lpe8 battery and uh, it's what 1120 mh battery not a very powerful battery we'll, we'll check out in our test how many snaps or videos this guy can last in one charging yeah, so that's about the hardware all in all a very cool and rugged looking nice classy looking camera body let's talk about the lens now it's a new stm lens so it supports is that's image stabilization as well as a stepping motor a stepping motor helps in uh, achieving the servo autofocus feature that uh, came on the 650 and now on the 700D. So uh, there are only two STM lenses right now. This one 18 to 135 mm, and then there is a um, you know cheaper 18 to 55 mm STM lens. Now you get the 700D body only, of course, and then with the uh, 1855 mm STM lens as well as with the 18 to 135 um, STM lens, depending on how much you're willing to shell out. So there you can see it's an EFS lens, it supports image stabilizer, in fact you have the image stabilizer button there, switch on or off, it has an autofocus thing, so you can autofocus the lens, so autofocus and manual focus, then it also supports macro at about 1.3 feet, so that's the focus ring and that's the zoom, it's not rotating because it's locked so you can lock the zoom in case you're one of those kiddies who keep playing with the zoom yeah and in the process loosening it in the long run 
so whenever you're not using it you can probably lock it yeah that's the zoom and then as I showed you that's the focus ring there's landscape good quality and there you see it's an EFS 18 to 135 mm the folk aperture range is 1 by 3.5 till 5.6 this guy takes a 67 mm filter yeah so let's go ahead and stick it to the Canon 700D so as this is an EFS lens so it has the white mount here so that's the white mount so I'm gonna match the white mount and then pull this towards the lens release button and there you go to 700D we'll check out the user interface now for that I'm gonna switch on the device so I'm in the still mode now switched on now if I want to record videos I need to switch this lever to the video mode the moment you switch on the first screen that greets you is the info screen which differs with the shooting mode you're in now I'm in auto and this info will differ there you see I'll go back to program and the moment I press Q I, I can now edit each of these quick functions so there is the um, exposure compensation scale so I can either alter it from here with the physical key or I can alter it by touch and this is a very very responsive screen so you won't face any lag any inaccuracy with this touch screen it's amazing it's a capacitive screen so uh, it will respond as your high-end smartphone would so you select the function first then tap it again to go to the detail and then you select like I'm selecting the size now raw raw plus jpeg or jpeg large you either again tap here to select this or you select it single and then back to do that basically it does the same thing i have the metering all here yeah, so tap the q button again to come back to the original non-editable info you have the main button from here and it's divided into the camera settings there you see the front camera settings you have your image quality I've shown you just now you yeah. and then you have some other settings like lens aberration correction you generally would want to uh, keep it enabled and then you have some other stuff auto lightning optimizer which is kind of like uh, um, you say dynamic range correction you have your metering modes and ISO auto yeah. so my ISO is in auto but it will go to a max of 6400 you can press menu to come back to come back one step so long exposure noise reduction and high ISO speed noise reduction I generally keep this on you can actually uh, switch the high ISO speed noise reduction off because you can easily correct that in post processing but it's very difficult to correct the noise of long exposure so you would want to keep that on you have another things uh, on the back of the camera these are settings are mainly applied to the back and then you have some still photo settings so you have protect and rotate and erase and whatnot there yeah now when I go to the movie mode and I push the lever here you would see um, now when I press menu you'd see the video menu appearing here where you can um, set your continuous autofocus settings or your movie size there you see a max of full HD 30 frame per second is what is possible sound recording and all those stuff yeah so come back to the still settings and then you have some of your system settings yeah usual supports NTSC and pile yeah. so you can go back by pressing the menu button and that's your favorite menu setting so you can add anything here for um, let's see register to my menu and I want to select lens aberration correction for example I press ok yeah I select this I press ok yeah and 
when I now when I come back here I'll see these to my saved settings so that I can quickly save all my uh, favorite settings here so that I don't have to fish for them in this long menu yeah you can toggle the info button you can switch it off there switch it on to have uh, it display some other informations and there is you can also toggle the live view mode from here so I'm in a steel mode there you see so it's in the steel mode now the moment I press this it will switch off the live view mode to record video I need to push this lever to the video it will automatically come to live view mode now I need to press this again to start recording there you see so this guy auto focuses beautifully while recording and uh, but then you see um, even in program even in uh, aperture priority mode you cannot actually set your aperture now uh, let's start recording and while recording you cannot set your aperture you can only set your exposure compensation scale there yeah or the servo autofocus on or off you can only set your aperture or your shutter speed manually while you're in full manual mode there you see now I can um, rotate the command dial here and my shutter speed changes there you see I can press this AV button here and then rotate the command dial and my aperture will change I can also toggle the ISO now and select an auto or a manual ISO mode there. You can also select various functions in live view. So I am in live view then the moment I press Q you can go to all these and for example now you can select your metering, you can select your drive mode and the biggest um, difference of the 700D with the 650D comes in this creative filters so now you can live preview the creative filters um, when I say grainy you see grainy soft focus fish eye effect and all this stuff so you can see all the creative effects live preview of them which wasn't possible with the 650d the touchscreen offers great functionality in the playback mode as well so now when you're in the playback mode then you can simply pinch zoom yeah there you see it's very fast and responsive yeah you can also zoom in by tapping this button by the way but I absolutely love using the touchscreen for that almost feel like I'm doing this on my smartphone you can also keep zooming it out to show various thumbnails so only a max of nine thumbnails per page is possible and uh, then you can delete one or you can have some other stuff as well um, yeah so that's the playback practically the playback menu is all there In general the system of the 700D is fast and responsive and the flag bearer of this system is the brilliant touchscreen LCD monitor. It's made of capacitive um, display as I told you before and that's absolutely a breeze uh, while you're browsing the UI or you're browsing the media. Now the buttons give proper feedback and there are no discomfort or that we felt you know operating them anyway. So they're, they are properly elevated and very nice so once you get used to all the buttons you won't have to fish for them any longer so you can just all of them are within proper reach of your you know fingers so that you can operate them pretty quickly and perfectly now photos for the most part the 700d takes excellent photos the colors are properly um, rendered and although um, we found that the saturation is dead on the lower side but we mostly clicked photos under overcast conditions so uh, we expected that to happen however uh, even under enough light there weren't 
very fine details that we felt uh, when we clicked um, some fine detailed objects like dogs or stuff then you know when we tried to crop the picture we saw a lot of grains and um, let's say the fur there or of those animals when all that separated to give you an indication of how detailed the photos are although and the JPEGs are a bit soft as well however in general under enough light the photos were all right and they're more truer um, in nature to whatever was out there in real uh, under low light again noise start appearing beyond 6400 um, as in 6400 and uh, beyond that you can also go up till 25600 but we would not recommend you go beyond ISO 6400 that uh, you know leads me to talk about how amazing the image stabilization is of the lens particularly now note that Canon does not have an autofocus system um, or you know in the body so it's the lens that has the autofocus system as well as the image stabilization system now under low light and um, we really mean low I mean we stretch the camera to a hilt and I shot it handheld uh, with an aperture of f by 3.5 ISO of 200 and I shot it at a um, 10 second exposure and even then the picture went shaky so it's only when I went up to 15 second and then 30 second the picture uh, started shaking and blur so in 10 second they were not tack sharp but they were you know I mean the um, the low light condition that I tested the camera is you wouldn't generally use this camera in uh, real life under those conditions so 10 seconds ISO uh, 200 the image stabilization is mind-blowing although the lens supports macro as it's mentioned here you can see but then the minimum distance is a little too far you see uh, the macro it's mentioned here it's um, 1.3 feet it's too far we tried it uh, macro with this obviously it's not you know one by one and uh, again the macros were a little soft and the details were missing the video recording of the 700D is first class and really uh, takes it from where the 650 ends it. Now in the video recording continuous autofocus is supported while recording and uh, you can change your aperture, um, shutter speed and ISO on the go while in full manual mode only. And when you're in aperture priority or shutter priority or even on the program mode you can only change the exposure compensation and uh, you can toggle the servo autofocus now um, because the lens is STM it has a stepping motor uh, it can continuously focus you can uh, it can lock of you know a uh, spot focus on the subject as long as the subject is still and then the moment the subject start moving uh, it can switch this to a servo autofocus which means continuous autofocus and also the autofocus system here is very very silent and almost instant is uh, the autofocus on the 700d is one of the best we have seen and it has nine autofocus points all crosshair types although they're concentrated quite a bit or uh, you know towards the middle and i like them really you know spread out but then all crosshair types is something that's quite commendable the canon 700d is the flag bearer of the canon's entry-level digital eos rebel series of cameras and it performs like one it's built like a premium mid-range camera not entry-level camera it performs uh, you know very well in steel and exceedingly well in video it has a amazing touch screen it comes with a new uh, stm lens which has a great white autofocus and very fast continuous autofocus and it also has a kind of more premium looks than the other canon entry-level cameras um, so when you compare the 700d with the nikon 5200 head-on 
uh, in terms of performance um, the Nikon 5200H is just a bit but then the 700D holds its own Ford it has some of the functions that you would not even get in some mid-range Nikon devices or Sony devices so all in all it's the best entry-level DSLR for Canon till now with a host of features and Canon of course you know experiment with all the new features on the entry-level DSLRs and then if they become popular then they incorporate those with the high-end devices like the 5D a series now all the features of a premium entry level are in the 700d and they together perform very impressively and if you like this video please hit the like button and subscribe us give us opportunity to give you more such awesome content thank you